Would you take it if I gave you $10 million right now? I mean, I don't know who wouldn't unless there's some stipulations around it. I'm glad you asked about the stipulation. Stipulation is you would die tomorrow. Mm, Yeah, then no. Then no, right? So it's like money is great, but it comes with a price. But you can build it up over time. And I want everyone to kind of really realize that. For many years, I was chasing money, and I think that was the wrong mistake. Hey, what's up, agency owners? Jason Swank here with another episode of the Smart Agency Masterclass. And I have an amazing agency owner who has grown an agency over a whole whopping two years, but has gotten over the seven-figure mark significantly uh, in such a short time. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the show. Natalie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jason. I love your podcast and I learn a lot from it. So hopefully I can add value to your listeners as well. Oh, I'm sure you will. So uh, tell us who you are and uh, what do you do? Yeah. So my name is Natalie Hogg. I started a company called Method Q. Um, Half of what we do is traditional marketing agency. The other half is placed talent or fractional CMO work or fractional director of demand generation work, for example, helping companies grow um, usually by placing, you know, senior level marketers to help expedite what we're trying to, what the goals you're trying to achieve with, with companies. Um, I started this business out of, um, a, uh, an idea. I, I wrote a press release actually, uh, in 2020 of my future and my retirement. Um, and everything I wrote in that press release came true way quicker than I expected it to. But, uh, uh, I'm happy that it did. So <laughs> that's how I got here. Well, that's that's the power of goals, right? Like you have to know kind of the destination. I, I always joke with people, I'm like they just kind of start by accident and then they don't know what's going on. And, you know, a lot of times in the very beginning, it's this fun stage, right? And you're going up. And then you start realizing as it starts going down a little bit, it's like, man, this kind of this is kind of hard. And then it gets really complex when you start bringing on team members and then most people quit and they go to the next thing. And it's kind of this same curve. You go up a little bit and then you go down and you quit. But if they realize that there's that little mark, there's that little uptick where you get that little momentum where then you can start chasing your goals. And and if you know where you're going, it's easier to hit that mark versus just, you know, shooting in the field going, I'm not going to get anything. So Talk, talk to me a little bit more about that press release, um, because I find that pretty interesting. Um, so what else was in that press release? Yeah, so I wrote, um, I was in a leadership class. I was working, I've only worked in-house before now. Um, and I was a problem solver. I was never really satisfied in my seat in-house. I, I like diverse problems. I like to do a lot of things. I think I'm a natural leader. Although at the time of writing this, I didn't actually know what leadership was. Now I'm learning every day due to all the problems you just talked about, uh, growing a team and adjusting. Um, but the press release itself was, you know, I wanted to, re- I wanted to own a consultancy that could travel and I could travel the world, helping people be on the board of a nonprofit and, you know, be giving back to, to people. And so I, started my agency, you know, following a layoff, uh, an unexpected shift in my career. And I used that as an opportunity to say, why not now? Why do I have to wait till later? I always thought I'd had to wait till, you know, I had several more years, a little more gray hairs on me to get started. And um, I think that was just that was a false narrative in my head. So I got the opportunity to kind of start and found like a huge gap in the market where companies, the first thing they do is lay off marketing and then sales, and then they realize they're behind on their goals, and they got to hurry up and reach their goals. And so we were, you know, I myself was plugging in, helping them figure it out while they're trying to figure out who they should hire. And then I just kind of developed a team around that. Um, And on the model of what I call the Warby Parker model, where for all of our successes, we give back in some way. 
So we always have a couple nonprofit clients. Um, I'm on the board of a nonprofit called Stand Up for Kids, where we help youth homelessness or kids at risk of homelessness. Um, and we are their marketing agency. There's some good stories there uh, related to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I started with the idea of faith. Like, okay, if I do the right things, this is going to work out, whether it's an experiment or it's long term. And so far, it's turning out to be, you know, two years later, uh, I've hired and I finally you know, have gotten things off of just my plate. And, you know, there are challenges that come with that, of course, but uh, it's also really exciting. Was there any point when you were starting that you were like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in the towel. Let, let's go do something else. No, honestly, no, because I didn't want to go back to, I, I liked that I had the control, even if it was scary and hard, um, which may or may not be healthy. I don't know. I think that's why a lot of people go out on their own is they like that control. And then I realized, you know, what I have realized recently specifically is that, you know, you also, you also just take care of yourself. So I'm very ambitious, constant growth. Um, I think about my team members first and how I'm making an impact. And then I don't focus on myself till it's too late. And I'm learning that the hard way this year, I've been sick a lot. Um, and, you know, with traveling and, you know, COVID got, got us all down, our immune system down. So, I'm just learning, you know, you also have to be, you have to take care of yourself as a leader and in order to be a good leader or to, to manage a business. And so it went from Natalie is consulting to I'm leading a team of amazing talent that I need to be there for. And if I'm going to be there for them, I have to be there for myself. What was the big surprise of building the team up that caught you off guard? It's, I, it kind of snuck up on me. So we grow, we just grew really fast. I think the surprise for me was that so many amazing people that I've worked with for years were willing to quit their job to come work for this tiny little startup that I started just because they trusted me. And they believed in that, that model where we wanted to do marketing right. Um, and we didn't want to have a transactional relationship with our clients. We wanted to have, we wanted to roll up our sleeves and be part of their team and be part of a long-term initiative or builders. And then also just, you know, kind of having the freedom to kind of build something around, um, uh, that w we could call our own. So, you know, the long-term goal is to do, um, all kinds of things outside of agency. Maybe we do a learning module, maybe we, you know, do some other things, but, um, the, the surprise was it kind of snuck up on me. I was like, Oh wait, now I'm responsible for people and families. And, um, it, you know, our, my reputation for uh, method Q's reputation has grown so much that people are hearing of me and I haven't even talked to them and it just kind of snuck up on me. So it's a great problem to have, but I think it's just making sure that you're conscious of that and conscious of your, your reputation and, and, um, uh, making sure that you don't lose the momentum that you actually want, like the, the value that you actually put into it. And so, so far we haven't, but, um, you know, the scale kind of snuck up on me. I think I'm just now adjusting to the reality, which, um, what's surprising you about the scale part, because a lot of people can hit the million mark sometimes by accident and then really kind of, you know, getting over the, the next million and then and constantly keep building, it gets more complex. What's really kind of snuck up on you for the scaling that's that stood out to you that's been like, hey, this has been kind of challenging? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I would say it's a lot of things, particularly uh, accountability. Accountability for what? For you to the employees or employees to you? For each client. So I myself was managing every single client. We're over 20 clients now. That's not that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's probably why you were sick all the time. <laughs> right, exactly. So putting, making sure other people are responsible for that, you know, I'll show up, say hi, create a relationship with, with uh, our, our accounts. There are some accounts that I'm way more involved in than others now. But, you know, that shift between, I, I guess, going back to the control thing, letting some control go, hiring people you trust to manage a relationship and making sure you don't lose sight of that relationship long term because you might have been the one to create it or start start it. Um, so yeah, I think that was definitely the biggest thing. What? So the first time, because there's a lot of people listening right now that 
um, how do I say this nicely? You're a control freak um, and you won't give up control to your team or possibly you don't trust your team, uh, which is a whole nother issue. So let's kind of unpack it a little bit. How did you find people that you trust? And then did you delegate an outcome to them? Or did you say, here's the exact task that I would do? Like, walk us through that. I was lucky enough to to work with people I've known for like 10 years. So I have... Mm, um, the network. Yes. And I've become really good friends with my coworkers. And, you know, I, I consider us a community of professionals, not, not an age, a hierarchical agency. Like, so everyone I've, I've hired, you know, there are some people that are only for execution and they're really good at that one thing. There are others that, you know, are, are, can add a lot more value to a conversation than I could on a certain topic. And that they're, they're, they have the depth and the breadth to offer like full service to, to companies. So I think, mm -hmm. You know, going back to to the scale is we're a full service agency and finding where you know there's still a weakness even if you're full service there's you know there's a lot of agencies that say they're full service but they started in design um, uh, and maybe they're struggling with some other items for us it's we're um, we started in content and demand generation and so we're really trying to scale our creative side which we I've just now recruited different talent to kind of make that you know, it's not like we're bad, but like, we're not the best. So like, how do we really, really focus? So I think focus is a key term. And then yeah, definitely working with people that you trust. And, an, and an, I'm an enabler, uh, or an empowerment, like I want to give you complete control, I don't need to make every decision. Um, but I'm nosy. So I'm, I'm always aware of everything. Um, but I want to influence decisions, not make them all the time. So I think trust is key. You can't have a good team without having complete trust. Um, so that you can have healthy conflict. And if you have healthy conflict, then you can actually lead to getting results done. Because if I were to assume I'm right all the time, uh, we wouldn't be as successful as we were or as we are. Yeah, it, it took me a long time to realize that if I need to make all the decisions, I'm the wrong, it, it's the wrong team. Um, I just need to make the final decision or not the final decision. It's more about the decision of where we're actually going and, and let everyone else figure out what's the method we use in order to get there. And, you know, we always, I've, I've always been trying to instill this in our agency mastermind with members when they ask a question or even when they have their team ask a question to the owner. It's like, Hey, what Jason, what should I do here? I'd be like, well, what's the what's the the problem or what's the question and then what are the three possible outcomes or the three possible solutions you're thinking and what's that one outcome that you want and then if you can kind of make them talk through that they can come up with their own conclusion and then you can kind of go well yeah why don't you go try that uh, rather than trying to fix everything i you know for many years when i ran the first agency i struggled because I would try to solve everybody's problem for them rather than trying to put that back on. And that's very hard. Even to today, someone will come to me with a problem and I want to solve it. And I, I got to kind of sometimes kind of throttle myself back a little bit and going, Hey man, like this is a teaching moment. <laughs> it may take us a little bit longer to teach them and they may not get there as fast, but it's kind of that old, uh, that old saying of, I can give you a fish or I can teach you how to fish, um, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, teaching you how to fish is longer, but now if you have 20 people fishing, you're going to hopefully, if you, if you are a good teacher for fishing, <laughs> unless you go on my boat, uh, most time uh, we don't catch any fish. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm gonna really relate to that because I think I still struggle with that. As I want to, I told you in the beginning of this interview that I was a problem solver, and that's what kind of led me into wanting to be a consultant, which led to running an agency. I mean, I love solving problems, so yeah, being able to say, "Sorry, I can't solve this problem," or you know, 
uh, traveling and being out of pocket all day. Well, like, I guess that term is <laughs> Gen Z doesn't accept that term anymore. So being <laughs> unavailable <laughs> that week, um, f- you know, to be there for my team is uh, hard because or is, is, is a natural test to if they can solve a problem without me being there. So because I've got myself personally have had so many commitments and, so, and been so busy, I've been the only salesperson up until now. I've kind of been forced to let go and to not make decisions and for my team kind of be left making them, they're swimming on their own because I wasn't there for like a couple days or something. So um, I've been incredibly impressed with my team because of that. Um, But I do think I need to spend a little bit more time than I do on my existing agency. I'm spending more time on my clients than my own company. And so that's the shift where I'm at, where I've got to spend more time on my company and the people Um, and, uh, you know, clients are very, very important as we all know, but they can also steal all your time and your, before you know it, your own business is, is hurting. And so we're not there yet, but that's just kind of what I've been recognizing recently. I was going to ask you about the, the freedom that you have right now. Do you have any freedom? Like, you know, you're a multimillion dollar agency. A lot of people would like to be in your shoes, but I also tell people, I'm like, Without freedom, it's not even worth it. So do you have the freedom that you envisioned when you were starting the agency yet? In the beginning, yes. It was amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, all at the fun stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really like, so I'm past the fun stage, but that was great. Um, now, you know, it's a choice. I have to choose whether to put my full self to the point where I'm exhausted in the business at all times or find those boundaries. And so... It's, it's a conscious decision you have to make every single day um, and make sure you find out if you're not able to put your full self in, who's there to fill the gap if it's not you? Because you're the only person that's going to care as much about your business as, as you do, um, unless you have you know equity. That, that, that is, I have equity incentives. That helps. Um, but finding the right people to fill in that gap. you know. So right now, I'm at the point where I need an assistant. I have been pushing... You know, I don't need one for a really long time. I've had some virtual assistance, some part-time help, but I need a professional who can help me make sure that I'm prepared uh, when I show up at, at, with everything at the right time, the right place. But then so does my entire team. So I've been thinking about a lot of different gaps recently of what could I, what could make our existing team more efficient? Where can, uh, where am I dropping the ball? Because I'm constantly going to be taking on more. And so I'm going to constantly have to delegate or, take a chunk off of my job and create a new job for it. And, you know, of course that new job sometimes impacts profitability, but does it give you an opportunity to make more money later? Yes. So finding that yeah. perfect balance, but I think it's an everyday thing. Yeah. I, I think we're, where you're at too. Um, I think it's about the who's I think it's about who do you need to bring in in order to help you with this? who do you want to serve, right? You've only been doing this for two years, which is amazing. So like, you'll figure out like, man, this type of client, man, this, this client drains the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. I need to get rid of this person. Like, thank you for helping me get here and and figuring this out. But you you need to go to my competition down the road, distract the hell out of them. Uh, And then the last two is really, who do you need to become? Um, you know, in order to, like, I always tell people, it's like my agency would get to this level, but guess what was holding the agency back? It was me. Mm-hmm. I was on top of it. But then if I could level up a little bit more then I could bring the agency up uh, another, you know, centimeter. I mean, it's all like centimeters and inches right, really. Right. <laughs> and, and, and we're all missing, missing those things. And then, you know, once you get there, then you can start creating you know, rules. And I would say creating rules on your time of, because, you know, I, I still sometimes I've in my older age, I've gotten a little bit more wisdom on managing my time. When I was in my twenties and thirties building the agency, any opportunity, I would like sacrifice my time. And I think that was a huge mistake looking back of rather going, Hey, if it's the right opportunity, it will wait. Like, uh, like for example, I always tell people 
Uh, Mondays, I don't do any meetings. Uh, Tuesdays through Thursdays from nine to two is when I do my meetings. Fridays are fun days, epic Fridays, we call them, go have fun. And then weekends are family. And so now I can still be thinking of business, but I've created those rules in order to not sacrifice. Because if we create, I look at people going, they always have revenue goals. And I think that's actually a mistake sometimes. I think it's more about how do I create some time goals because at the end of the day, if I gave you $10 million right now, would you take it if I gave you $10 million right now? I mean, I don't know who wouldn't unless there's some stipulations around it. I'm glad you asked about the stipulation. Stipulation is you would die tomorrow. Mm, yeah, then no. Then no, right? So it's like money is great, but it comes with a price. But you can build it up over time. And I want everyone to kind of really realize that because it's, I was for many years, I was chasing money. And I think that was the wrong mistake. Um, rather than how do I like, what I love doing is this, I love doing podcasting, I love, you know, uh, getting a small group of people together and, and seeing what kind of ideas we can come up with together. Right? Like, that's what drives me like, there's no picking work or pleasure. It's, it's all the same. Um, and I, I hope everyone can find that out. Cause when, when we were able to find it out, then we were to a point where we could sell. And I actually regret selling cause I, I love that business, but I do love this business just as much. So. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think there, there's a lot of lessons to learn and lessons to be learned. <laughs> learned, uh, you know, I, like you said, I am new to this and I'm very aware of where, you know, every day I'm learning something I didn't think about, especially running a business. It's a whole other thing. Like I know marketing really well. I know politics really well. I know how to sell. I love it, but all the other stuff is just as important. And if I just ignore it, then there isn't a sustainability long-term. And so, yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think Picking the right partners is good. I, I'm at the point now where I need to be really thinking about that because you don't want to burn your team out. Like, you know, you can always hire, but if you lose your really good talent, like that's part of your value. Um, that's a large part of your value. Oh, it's the it's everything. I mean, it it literally is everything, especially if you build a business that's scalable. And like when you build a business that's scalable, it doesn't need you to do everything. You're not doing sales, you're not doing marketing, you're not doing delivery. You're just doing like, you're building the key relationships. You're, you know, setting the vision and coaching and mentoring your team, right? Like there's, there's very limit, there, there, it's very limited to what you need to do. But the cool thing is, is like you learn every day. Like I learn something every day. Like I always laugh, a uh, couple um a couple of weeks ago, my team was like, man, why are all these old members coming back? And I was like, well, because we help them out and they know we're constantly learning, <laughs> right? Like, because a lot mm -hmm. of people will join a group or join a community or work with a coach and that community or coach gives them everything and that, and they never want to learn anymore. But like when they, you're constantly learning and adapting, they're like, Ooh, what else? Like, I like that. And, and see what they can do. Yeah, I think curiosity is is really the key to any type of success. Or, you know, you have to, like you said, the valleys, you have to get past the hard part. And that curiosity gets you back up that hill. I think that's one of the number one traits we look for. Curiosity, being humble, uh, being resourceful. Um, you know, those are, those are always ones that will kind of constantly get you keep driving you know, uh, forward and not be stagnant. I see too many people that, you know, they're, they've had a business for 20 years and they're happy with where it's at, but they haven't grown in years and years because they haven't had that curiosity or that hunger, uh, you know, in order to, to go. And, um, I'm glad I, I hear you say curiosity. Um, I'm always curious on how things work. Uh, even though I'm like, like yesterday I was joking with my team. I love like on the little shorts, like you can watch. And this person was 
building like this centerpiece and it had like this cup uh, with the rose and water under it. And then they put another thing over top of it and turned it up and they kept putting stuff around it. I'm like, what are they creating? They literally wasted five minutes of my time. It was the dumbest thing ever. But I was just curious to be like, <laughs> what kind of magic thing are they creating? <laughs> so oh, yeah. a lot of times we got to be careful. Curiosity, curiosity can also lead you down a TikTok rabbit hole. So I know, man. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The, I always joked with people that um, my only competition was cat videos and procrastination. Um, and I would get on like dog videos or cat videos on that's TikTok good. or on shorts or, or whatever platform and be like, Oh, that's cool. And then I'd start sending it to people. I'm like, and then I keep getting more and more and, and my ADD kicks that's, over. So, well, that's because like, you know, our brains like to be rewarded. And so we don't like to not know. And like, that's not a comfortable feeling. So like part of what I learned when I wrote that press release, uh, in 2020 was, like about my future was, you know, you have to embrace what's uncomfortable in order to grow or change your reality. So, um, I try to remember to do that every day, but you got to find the balance where you're not burnt out. You can't always be uncomfortable, but if you're, if you're comfortable, then what's the point of living? Because, you know, our, there is some, some suffering and some challenges in life, but to get on the other side of that is the why for life. So, um, you know, Things are hard, but at the end, they can be worth it. So you wrote this press release two years ago. Do you try to write a press release every year or when's your next one? I'm due for one now because I've I've reached all my goals. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'm actually working on one right now. So I'll let you know in a couple of years what I wrote when it comes true. I, whenever I, I picture this, um, and I hope you do, I, I, I think it's a good exercise for everyone. I haven't even thought about it, right? Like to publicly write out your goals and you put it out for everyone. They're first going to see what are, what are you wanting to create? What do you believe in? And you'll probably be surprised about how many people actually help you. Um, you know, when they actually see this, like I almost think we all need to do a press release every year. And I always think of the, um, you know, one of my favorite movies like Jerry Maguire, when he's like, it's a mission, it's not a mission, it's a mission statement or whatever he calls it. And he puts it out there, but it really built his company. Like he put it out there of like, we should have fewer clients. We should give them more, you know, like that's kind of what we all should be thinking about. Um, and then it gives us a good direction for where we're going, what our team needs to actually do. So I, uh, I hope everyone, um, you know, does that. But Amazon does that. They write a press release uh, of, you know, their product, what they want to do for their product. And so it's, it's actually a business strategy as well. So look into that. That's interesting to me. Ooh, I'd like that. That's cool. Well, this is awesome, Natalie. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think would benefit the listeners listening in? I mean, I think just make sure that you attract people that you, that you align with their values. So, you know, I've, I've happened to, like I told you, I wanted to have a give back model, everyone on my team, um, it, we had a, a website, uh, that we needed to inherit and help and fix for a nonprofit. And I had 10 volunteers volunteer their time during a very busy season to help us get this over the line for the nonprofit. And I just, I, re- I remind myself every day that, you know, I recruited the right people because it's more than just the paycheck. It's how are we making a difference and sit in the power that you can have or the, the influence that you can control and do what you can with it. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, what's the agency website people can go and check you out? TheMethodQ.com. Awesome. And for everyone listening, I want to thank all of you for listening for like nine and a half years. Uh, we're coming up on 10 years and we want to feature you guys and ha- have and have the ability for you guys to come on the show and have me interview you. If you want that to happen, go to SmartAgencyMasterclass.com. And there's a little button at the bottom, you know, apply to come on the show. So I'd love to have you, if you've been listening to the show for a while, have you come on and, uh, and let's wrap and, uh, and chat about the growth of your agency and, and all good stuff. So do that. And until next time, have a swank day.